Yo, what's up? This is a Tesla Model S Long Range Raven. And in this video, I will test the consumption on this. And you probably wonder why you tested it before, right? Well, the thing is that this car is equipped with mag rings, 19 inch. They are five kilos lighter than uh, Tesla's Slipstream. So I want to know if these are more efficient or not. I, I suspect that they are not because uh, it's all about aerodynamics. But we will see if the weight has something to do with it also. So you see, yeah, to me it seems like it, once you start rolling it at 90 kilometers per hour, and especially at 120 kilometers per hour, uh, it should make some turbulence. Whereas the slipstream are more, yeah, more aerodynamics. So um, the plan is that we will start from here. I will quickly plug in to reset the since last charge. And then we drive north towards, okay, let me show you inside the car. It's, it's easier to, for you guys who are not familiar with this uh, area here. So over there we have the, the Ionity chargers and also Grun Contact right there. So we know this stretch. You see 84 kilometers from here to Brumendal and back again. And that should be 168 kilometers. And then we will also check distance and everything. And the tire pressure, by the way, is 2.9 bars coal. I checked it two days ago. So um, let's just reset. And well, okay, I'm also live streaming. And then we do 90 kilometers per hour. And then after that, we do 120 test. Oh, and also let's use, yeah, let's use 21 degrees Celsius. And then in driving here, you put it on range mode, just like we did in the other test. So yes, good to go, almost. Just plug it in then. We are on the move now, and uh, we have to cruise at 91 kilometers per hour to be 90 on GPS. And yeah, I said 2.9 bars, but that's when they are cold. So now they are heated up from the driving. So, okay, 3.3, 3.2, what's a bit higher than expected. I, I would expect it to be 3.1, 3.2 bar, but okay, okay. Maybe they cool down a little bit during the trip. But look here, new feature. This one, I mean, it's Raven with the newest uh, Raven dampers. You can see real time info here. <laughs> Let me zoom in so you can see better. Compression rebound, yeah, that's some nerdy stuff right there. I don't know what it means. So that's cool. Uh, the first thing we'll do now is weigh the car. I haven't weighed, I haven't checked the weight on a, on a Raven non-performance before. So hopefully the scale works. Okay, let's see. Front axle, oh. Front axle, 1160. The whole car. Two to sixty. Whoa, two to forty. That's heavy. Damn. Okay, not too much wind today. Nice weather. So we have to do the mandatory. Mioson, 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 mushroom, mushroom. Oh, then the car just ruins my view here. Okay, whatever. It wasn't his fault. No, no, no. We are now at Hamad, and let me show you guys here. Look, 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 he slows down, he slows down. On the motorway, stop doing that, go. On the way, <laughs> on the way here, it will slow down to 40 kilometers per hour on the motorway here. And this car has the latest update. It has hardware three, I'm gonna show you here. If you look at the release notes, it will say lots of fingerprint, but it says speed assist improvements. It means that this car can read speed limit signs, but it doesn't work because the car thinks it's 80 zone here. And some people say that, well, it needs to learn it. Well, I've given it a lot of time now. It still doesn't learn it. <laughs> it should see the speed limit signs, but it doesn't do it. But okay, anyway, status so far is that um, consumption is 147 so far, but we have now headwind and uphill you can see, well, I, I, I checked it. We have headwind. So that means that the consumption should be around 150, at least 155 maybe. Yeah. 
So, uh, I guess someone mentioned that it happens with the shadow of the bridges. No, but uh, what you guys saw here was uh, GPS-based shit. It happens on the same spot every time. The car thinks it's a 30 stone and it slows down to 40. <laughs> yeah, but let's just keep going then. We are back at the starting point and if we look at the trip meter, it was 150 watt hour per kilometer, but uh, the trip is, um, the distance is incorrect, so it's 1.3% error, which means that the real consumption is 152. And if we compare that one with uh, the previous test, with that was with a different car, but with slipstream, similar driving conditions, similar weather, it was 144. So based on this, we can say that at least for this wheel set, um, the rims and tires, different tires, different rims, it was uh, 8 watt hour per kilometer better consumption than today. So because we have two important variables here, rims and wheels, then we don't know for sure if the rims, the lighter rims are better or not, but I think we can assume that it's like that. So what we want to do now is do the high speed test. We drive 120 and see how big the difference is then. Okay, we are on the move now and uh, we have to cruise to 122 and we have lots of traffic in the left lane <laughs> so i mean having a drinking game every time we see an ev you have to drink right. ampere e model 3 okay we just happen to have no cars here and i have to hug the left lane so i can see them better e-golf Yeah, no cars here right now. What's that? Fossil. Yeah, sometimes they come in big chunks. There, 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 there. Here, here's a big chunk. Nope. Oh, there, there, there. Here's one, here's one. Yeah, e-tron. Let's change lane. Oh, there's a... You could see in front of me. Oh, yeah, here, here, here's more, here's more. Model S. Model 3. Oh, here's a big chunk. Is that e-golf? Could be e-golf, no, maybe not. Yeah, just massive. But this is probably not the best place to check them out. Should try Alnabru or Sköjen. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should make a new video, right? Where I check out the cars. But there's an EQC in front of me. We have just turned around now at the end point. Now we're heading back. And now we will hit the traffic. <laughs> but I'm going to show you that the consumption at this point was 209. With downhill and tailwind, it's already higher than uh, with the slipstream and the Michelin tire. So, uh, we just have to see now how it is on the back and turn and run round back but we will hit traffic eventually and then we get stuck behind traffic and then speed goes down consumption goes down we are back at the starting point and this time it was 208 in the trip meter and then we have to add 1.3 percent error and it becomes 211 so this time we had 15 watt hour per kilometer higher consumption at 90 kilometers per hour it was nine so you see and also this was a pretty clean run. I saw that we had traffic, but I was lucky and didn't get stuck behind too much traffic. So it was a clean 120 kilometers per hour run. So based on this, we can uh, assume that um, the, the slipstream rims actually gives you better consumption than these uh, not aerodynamic rims. And it, it seems like the, the, the lower weight on these rims doesn't help at all. In theory, it shouldn't help because we are just driving constantly uh, so if we did a, a city run with start and stop, that could have been different because it would be slower speed and more acceleration, deacceleration. But for highway, it doesn't matter at all, these light rims. So I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.